Hi everyone, I'm Zibong Dong, the PhD student from the Institute of Information Engineering, Chinese Academy of Sciences. The paper I'm sharing today is our testing work on the deep learning framework APIs. In this work, we adopt differential testing to find API buffs across different deep learning frameworks. Nowadays, deep learning systems are rapidly evolving. We abstract the deep learning systems into four layers, namely the application layer, the framework layer, the runtime library layer, and the hardware driver layer. The top layer is the deep learning application, which contains the various applications for the for deploying the model and a wide variety of models such as MongoNet. The second layer is the deep learning framework, which provides APIs for the developers to build models such as TensorFlow and PyTorch. The third layer is the runtime library, which provides optimization and acceleration for model inference on different platforms, such as the NM API or Android platform. The bottom layer is the hardware drivers, which connects the design of the upper software stack with the underlying hardware. There has been a lot of research on the security of models, including adversary examples, model backbones. These security issues belong to deep learning algorithm flaws, but our work focuses on deep learning frameworks to discover security issues in their code. While there has been some previous work on testing deep learning frameworks, Few of them have focused on the inconsistency bugs that exist across frameworks, which makes the same model in two frameworks with different inference results or even more serious hazards. We use differential testing to find inconsistencies in cross deep learning frameworks, but with a number of challenges. The easiest one to think of is how can we get the functional equivalence of APIs in the cross framework. Besides that, it is also difficult to extract the constraints on the parameters of the APIs, especially when it comes to the constraints that exist among multiple parameters, which may not be, will not be stated in the documents. Also, based on these constraints, how to generate test cases with high quality to improve testing efficiency. In our cross-framework testing scenario, it is especially important to solve this challenge. After found the bug, it is very difficult to evaluate how harmful the bugs find. Deep learning developers often perform deep learning inference through deep learning models instead of APIs. It is then very difficult to construct model inputs to travel at an API bug in one of the operator bugs in your model. So in the next, we introduce our methods to overcome these challenges. We begin by defining functionally equivalent APIs, which we call counterpart APIs. For an API F, its counterpart is a composite of an FI. It possesses two properties. The first one is semantic equivalence. For the same input, the difference between their output results under the P norm must not, must not exist to the epsilon. The second is sectionality. For a multi-API counterpart, the order of API combination matters. So next, how do we extract the counterpart API across frameworks? We extract the counterpart API from the model converter of deep learning framework. As shown in the figure, a TensorFlow model can be converted to an Onyx model by TF to Onyx converter. And on the contrary, an Onyx model can be converted back to a TensorFlow model by Onyx to TF converter. Similarly, Onyx and the PyTorch can be converted to each other using their corresponding converters too. So we extract the counterpart APIs from the converter code through a static analysis. The converter starts with a mapping at the operator level, which defines the mapping relationship in a dictionary also known as registry. In this registry, the key is the source framework's APIs, and the value is the handler corresponding to the operator in the target framework. The handler performs the source target's operator mapping according to the API parameters. Based on this code pattern, we manually identify the registry of each converter beforehand. 
And then automatically extract the mapping of APIs between two frameworks and the parameter conditions should be satisfied. Eventually, we get a batch of candidate equivalent APIs. We warp these candidates' counterpart APIs into two computational graphs, then deduce the parameter correspondences of the counterpart APIs from the conversion of the graphs. For example, G1 is the computational graph warped by TensorFlow's truncate dialog operator, and the G2 is the computational graph warped by PyTorch's torch dot dialog operator. The model before and after the conversion does not change the nature of model inputs, including the shape, type, and the order of the inputs. That is, the in and out degrees of the computational graph remain unchanged. We match the attributes of the input nodes in both graphs one by one to get the parameter correspondences. Eventually, this process the counterpart APIs will be used as our test targets. Next, we extract and analyze the parameter constraints of the API in order to generate more efficient tasks later. We consider a total of nine attributes. For a pair of counterpart APIs, we can find structured API profiles in their code repository. And by parsing these API profiles, we can obtain most of the simple parameter of constraints. Including the, including the type and data type of each parameter. As shown on the right side of the figure, the API files of the truncate dial and torch dot dial APIs are described in their respective frameworks. In addition to extracting constraints from API files, we also extract some more hidden parameter constraints from the API code, especially concerning some multi-parameter constraints. We focus on the position of the predicates, expression in each assertion and error handling statements. After parsing the statements into an AST, we recognize the parameters and the predicates involved in the expression and translate them into constraint expressions and parameters. With sufficient constraints, we start generating test cases. And here we propose a joint constraint analysis approach to generate more efficient test cases. Specifically, we intersect the constraints of both parties on the same attributes of the same operating parameter, and the test cases generated in the intersection set are more correct, allowing us to reach deep code. At the same time, the constraints of both sides of the same attribute of the same parameter are sold for their respective differences. And the test cases generated in the different sets are used to test the framework of the missing constraints, which has a higher property of finding the box. Meanwhile, in the runtime testing phase, we recognize and extract the meaningful error messages thrown by the framework which guides us to fix the current wrong test cases and improve the testing efficiency. And on the other hand, after T runs, if the code coverage remains unchanged, we will extend the sampling range, including doubling the sampling range for values and adding a new dimension for the tensor. Also, we extend some special values like empty value, zero, negatives, minimum, and maximum for random selection and combination to accelerate backbounding. Next, we present the results of the testing. We find a total of 257 bugs on the six deep learning frameworks, including 177 crash bugs and 80 inconsistent bugs. Of these, 230 are newly found bugs, all of which are confirmed by the developers. We also applied for HCE numbers, and you can see that the types of vulnerabilities are mainly focused on missing checks and the command injection. And we got a reward of $1,100 from the vendor. We did multiple sets of comparative experiments to verify our advantages over Paris work in terms of code coverage and the number of bugs found. 
We also did ablation study to verify the effectiveness of our drugs, consequence analysis, and subsequent test optimization strategies. In addition to that, we found some bugs in the converters. For example, the figure on the right shows the computational graph of the adjust contrast V2 operator into the flow after being converted to the Onyx model by the TF2 Onyx converter. When they encounter the same input, they produce relatively large deviations. Here is another case study. This converter only converts the data type of quantized operators from unit to flow 32. Before the model contains such quantized operators, the computation result will be inconsistent by the order of 0.01 after conversion. For example, an image of snail is correctly classified in original model with confidence 0.7. After the conversion, it is created as bubble with confidence 0.6 by the model. Figure 6 displaces the distribution of biases in confidence for all correctly declassified Examples. As for the 17,113 samples with decreasing confidence, the reduction of confidence is 0.03 on average, with a minimum, maximum decrease of 0.3. That's the end. Thank you very much for listening. Feel free to contact me if you have any questions. Thanks.